Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and this video is what the heck is going on with the Toyota Tundra fuel economy? And I say that at the gas station. I just filled up the truck. I just reset the odometer. I'm taking a long road trip. Uh, more on that in a minute. But I want to explain about this video is that I did a 100 mile test. I got like 22, I think 22 and a half on the computer, 24 hand calculated on fuel economy, which I did better than EPA. But I got friends and people on the comments below that video who aren't even coming close to those numbers. I have a friend in Idaho. He bought this truck the week after I bought mine, dro drove it back from Texas, the week after I drove it back from Texas. He gets like 11 miles per gallon. I've seen him do 11, he sent me screenshots of 12, even down to nine. Now, I got 11 miles per gallon when I was towing a 6,000 pound camper. <laughs> I've not got 11 miles per gallon in this truck. So I thought, you know what, let's do another fuel economy test, but let's do a big one, a big one. I am on my way to Chicago. I'm gonna take a couple days to get there. I'm gonna pick up Jill, the five foot wonder, who's also on this channel, you find her videos, she does a lot of collaborations with me. We're gonna get in the truck. We're driving to Michigan to do the Million Mile Tundra Redone. We're gonna talk about what they did with that truck into this truck, if you know that story. I'm going to work truck show in Indianapolis. Then I'm gonna stop by Rough Country on the way back and they're gonna lift and level and put a bunch of stuff in this truck. So we're gonna get fuel economy numbers driving east all the way from western Nebraska, all the way to Chicago. I'm gonna have to fill up while I'm there to the trip and I'm gonna go premium for one of those fill ups, see what the heck's going on with that. They'll do 87 octane versus premium. We'll do a long road trip. I'll come around, do some Jill driving. We'll do some fuel economy from that. We'll come around the backside and in Tennessee, we'll lift it, lower it, whatever we're gonna do with this darn truck. And then I'll give you fuel economy heading west into the wind, uphill by the way, with the lifted level stuff. And we can see what that fuel economy is. So we're gonna do, it's all about fuel economy. If you wanna talk, if you want exterior driving press, all that stuff, ah, I got tons of videos for that. This is only about fuel economy. So I just filled up. I'm gonna get to York, Nebraska tonight and uh, hit the hay. And then I'll update you as I get gas. And I'll tell you what we're doing fuel economy when I get to that place. Let's go ahead and uh, get eastbounded down, loaded up and trucking. Yeah, it's gonna be a good time. All right, hey, two things I forgot to mention I want to talk about real fast. First of all, it's 27 degrees out today. A snowstorm came through the area. It's on its way out. I'm driving away from the snowstorm. That's a good thing. All right, quick update. We're at 21 mile per gallon. I am doing 70 miles an hour. I'm on uh, old, or I'm on 26 or whatever. We're heading towards I-80. I-80 will have a higher speed limit. But I just thought I'd share that. Oh, and distance to empty. That's something that people talk about. It's basically a math, right? So you take your mile per gallon average divided by how many tanks you have, in, how much gas you have in a tank. So you can see there I have 300, basically 359 miles left of range, and I've gone 55 miles. So you know, you're looking at over 400 miles of range, total range. But yeah, just an update there. When I get on I-80, I'm gonna go ahead and give you an update how that mile per gallon changes as we get going faster. All right, now we're on I-80 heading east. My mile per gallon drop just here, go hit 80 miles an hour, right? Uh, 20.9 mile per gallon. I am in normal mode, by the way. Not driving eco or sport or anything. Normal mode and 30 degrees out and the wind is blowing. So I, this is this is the worst conditions you want for fuel economy testing. And that's my number so far. So I'm gonna get to the hotel room tonight and update you tomorrow at the gas station. Uh, the benefits technology. Radar cruise control is not available. Pre-collision, you know why? It's winter time. The roads are getting pretty nasty. I had to slow down anyways because of the way the roads are going. But yeah, it's all like, no, we can't see anything. We'll check it out. That sensor is covered with probably slush and mud. Yeah, nothing works. So I'm gonna have to hit a car wash sometime tomorrow probably, or later on today, and uh, get that thing cleaned up. Or uh, I got some water. Yeah, I'll just pull over and take care of myself. But yeah, the joys of wintertime driving. And by the way, these conditions, like I said, are just horrendous. And last I checked, 19.7 mile per gallon in these conditions, which that's really not that bad. Oh, here comes the alert again. That's one of my complaints with this Tundra is that these alerts are just on you and on you. If my phone doesn't connect to the uh, infotainment screen, it's on you and on you. So, but enough about that. That's just one update from the road. All right, conditions got a little gnarly. Um, let me do my thing, but uh, 
I'm in four high because road conditions have just completely deteriorated uh, to that point. Uh, one point is radar cruise control is not going to operational. Not that I want to use it here anyways, but it's blocked. It's probably got some mud or dirt or water on that se that sensor that's blocking it. So it doesn't uh, read anything. But one of my complaints with Toyota is that the, it alerts me, but now it won't go away. <laughs> like, just go away. And it'll be come back, trust me. But yeah, you can see the truck shaking. This is... Uh, there's back, yay! Hey, the air's back. But uh, this is uh, it's gonna wear your butt down. I'll tell you that much. These conditions have gotten worse, which is crazy to me. But it shouldn't be this bad. It should be cleared up by now. But it's not. Yeah, I got shaking all going on. <laughs> this is crazy. All right, here we go. Early morning, 7 a.m. outside of Omaha, putting in premium now, 91 octane. Interesting. There's not even 85 here. It's only 87 and 91. So I'm going to fill this up and I'll hop in the cabin and I'll tell you what the economy was with the 87 we used in that side of Nebraska and then we'll talk 91 when I get to that side of Chicago. Hopefully I get, I don't know if I get that far. Uh, anyways, maybe somewhere in Iowa, somewhere in Illinois and we'll do the fuel economy difference between that and premium. So yeah, good stuff. As soon as I wake up, I'm damn cold. It's cold, it's windy, fuel economy should be terrible. It should, I mean, all the physics factors are against it, right? Big brick, smallest place of V6 with turbos, cold temperatures, wind in my face, wind off the side, wind behind me. I swear to God, the wind's coming everywhere. <laughs> what the hell is it? <laughs> All right, so I said I went 426 miles. Yeah, I took the, uh, the sponge cleaner and I went across the grill and apparently the sensor is buried in there a little more. I gotta find a car wash because I'm not driving all the way to Chicago without uh, parking sensors and really it's cruise control i can't forget about parking sensors but uh we went 426 miles and i just used 24.25 gallons and over a hundred dollars for premium <laughs> it's uh, gas prices okay so uh 426.5 divided by 24.254 17.58 and the computer says 17.5 so you know, hand calculation on this has been pretty accurate since I've owned this truck. Every time I do hand calculation versus the, the trip odometer, uh, it's pretty spot on. So, I don't know what the deal with that. Some people have problems with that, some people don't. Anyways, I'm going to reset everything, and then we'll get down the road and we'll check what premium does. Yeah. See if I get my $100 worth. <laughs> I won't. All right, let's uh, slow down a minute. Let's talk about that last section a little bit more. So we noticed during the editing process that that section actually had the most varied fuel economy. And you'll see in the rest of the video as the fuel economy changes, it get kind of more straightened out. But that section specifically had a huge drop and huge changes in fuel economy. And so I want to address that. So when I left my house in Nebraska, I drove like 70 miles an hour down to the interstate, 70, 75 in that range. And so I got some pretty decent fuel economy numbers getting to the interstate. Once I got on the interstate, got up to 80, 85 miles an hour. Yeah, we started seeing those drop. And then I put it, had hit that ice and those snow conditions. And so I put it in four high. And again, that's going to kill fuel economy. And so I really started seeing a big drop and change. So by the time I got to York, Nebraska, which is my overnight stop, my fuel economy had gone down like 19 and was going, it was actually going to trend down to 17, as you saw in the video. Next morning I woke up and it was below freezing, had to find a car wash, which is kind of an interesting thing to try to find. Anyways, I get back on the road and it is freezing cold from York, Nebraska to Chicago, Illinois. I had a, um, was doing higher speeds again, 80, 85 miles an hour. I had a lot of wind blowing around, really cold conditions. And so you're going to see those numbers really plummet, as you saw on the screen, uh, as I was driving. As I got more and more at, again, four high, nasty conditions, higher speed, cold temperatures, it was just a recipe for bad fuel economy. And you'll notice here, as we get driving, I'm gonna add premium in this conversation, and it's pretty interesting, the results. And my conclusion was it wasn't really worth it, but we looked at the post-editing and, well, the numbers are interesting. So again, watch to the end, because we have a whole chart showing all the differences. And, um, hmm, it's the goatee rub time. Hmm, interesting conclusions, hmm. All right, real quick, here's what it looks like. That is as dirty as it is. And I cleaned this off, but still, still getting the sensors. And you can see, it's not 
filthy, filthy, but you can see where last night, you know, that's all ice that built up and that kind of stuff and all the dirt. So sensors don't work when they're dirty. Newsflash, shocking, I know. And one more note before I hit the road. The uh, truck was down to less than an eighth of a tank. So I had like 30 miles of range left. So uh, I filled it up. So I kind of have a little bit of a mixture of 87 and 91. All right, car wash. Next up. All right, made it to Chicago. We have 18.8 mile per gallon on the screen. Went 400. Turn right at the end of the road. 475 miles. Uh, kind of a crap shoot here today, but okay. And uh, LOL at Chicago gas prices just paid like five bucks a gallon. 504 for just this for 87 octane. <laughs> And I don't know if I filled up. It went to $125 and it stopped. So, I don't know. All right. Yes, I did say $125. It's been $225 to my two Phillips. <laughs> That's just funny. All right. I uh, went 47, 475.8 miles. I mean, I was damn near empty. Divided by 24.757, 19.2, which, again, it won't, and it won't accept my card anymore. So... <laughs> It's uh, it's what it is. Uh, so let's call it eight. Let's split the, split it. Say 19 miles per gallon is what I get for premium. Was it worth the extra five bucks? Really, what it cost me? Because it was like four dollars back there or four twenty for premium. Nope. <laughs> Answer that question. Not worth it. There you go. So let's uh, keep on the road trip. Because uh, yeah, I got some more stuff to do. So it's my turn to drive, and I've stolen the keys. Key away from Tim and uh, we are uh, fueling up and I'm currently at 16.6 .6 miles per gallon, 302.7 miles and uh, yeah, that's that's kind of where we're at at the moment. Um, let's see how far down I can get that fuel economy to be. How low do you think I can go? <laughs> All right, filling up again. I'm in Indiana somewhere. The way down, we went from Michigan down to Indianapolis and uh, we had construction, we had uh, not ideal weather to drive in for fuel economy, cold temperatures, wind, a variety of things. But I'm show you the screen. So I have in there a little bit better. There we go. 17.2 mile per gallon and went 445 miles. So that's your stats on that. Um, like I said, I, the more I drove actually out of Indianapolis, the better fuel economy became because I actually got to drive a little bit faster. I got to be about 70, 77 miles an hour. And I just got the roll. I didn't have stop and go. I didn't have all, all that kind of city construction stuff. Um, one note is I'm not going to hand calculate this. And the reason why is my way to Dyersburg, Tennessee, which I believe is how to say it. Uh, rough countries there. They're going to put a lift kit on this truck. And I want to do a full tank of gas with lift truck. So I'm only going to put like 50, 60 bucks in today. Which um, I'm trying to think. Fuel economy was like, fuel prices was like $4 or something. So this trip has been amazing in that I filled it for less than $4. Filled it for $5. Fill it for less than four dollars, getting down to four dollars. Maybe time I get back home, <laughs> it'll be under four again. Oh, these fuel prices are all over the map. It's kind of crazy, but uh, yeah. So I'm not gonna fill it up, but I just want to give you the update. So I'm gonna um, keep going down the road. Hopefully get to Dyersburg tonight, and uh, we'll do the lift kit tomorrow, and then it'll be the race to get home. Well, not a race, but it'll be the drive to get home, which would be, I think it's like 16 hours or a thousand mile. I don't even know what it is from that side of Tennessee. It's very western side to very western side of Nebraska. So. I like that looks like, but yeah, let's go ahead and get some gasket on the road. There we go. An update from the road. Today is Saturday, I think. <laughs> uh, yesterday I drove from Indianapolis to Dyersburg, got the leveling kit installed. I got the side um, uh, running boards installed, the side steps, and then I drove to middle of Missouri, somewhere Lebanon, Missouri. Um, not really sure that's in the correlation stuff. I'm heading up through Kansas City and back to Nebraska. So this fill up was some interstate, some uh, country roads, really cool driving in Missouri, man. Big hilly terrain, just really cool stuff. I really enjoyed it. But I just filled up, and so let's check the number. And the number says 16.0 miles per gallon. I had gone 365.4 miles. I got 23.041 gallons divided by the mileage. I got hand calculation was 15.85. Eight, so pretty darn close. Uh, interestingly enough, so that's the worst fuel economy I've gotten this entire trip, and I just paid the best fuel price the entire trip. I paid three dollars and seventy nine cents. So 
Um, <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of crazy. So anyways, I'm gonna head up through Kansas City. I'm trying to hit most interstates, try to get more highway miles than I did driving through parts of Missouri, 45, 55, some 70, just all over the place. So we'll see if we can't get that number a little bit higher. And I don't have Jill driving anymore. So yeah, that number should go a lot higher. Yeah, right? No hot rod Sally this time. <laughs> All right, back home from the road trip. Let's see what we got fuel economy. 16.2 was coming back on the trip. So, sorry I couldn't do the hand calculations on that. I had the 722 miles. The gas station I stopped at to fill up had a $75 cutoff for the credit card and it just was a really nasty gas station. I don't wanna stay around anymore. You've been to those places? Not the greatest place you want to stick around for. So I, I jetted. Uh, as you saw on this trip, my fuel economy was pretty darn close to the hand calculation anyways. So I said, you know what? I've done it several times. I think we're pretty good in what it's supposed to be. Okay, let's recap. What did we learn? What did you learn? What did I learn? What did we learn? What did, yeah, what happened? All right, so we learned that fuel economy can vary greatly from 15 to 21 miles per gallon. Um, people ask me all the time what I'm getting for fuel economy. And my problem is I can't give you a solid answer because... In the small displacement V6 engines with the turbos, it has been my feeling, and it's confirmed by this trip, that the fuel economy varies greatly. These engines are very susceptible to changing weather conditions, right? Cold temperatures, wind, it's very, those turbos really kick in to give you that extra power through those, through those uh, changing conditions, like through the wind and such, and that really, really sucks down the fuel. We also learned that above 75 miles an hour when you get into 80, that uh, yeah, you're gonna see a lot more uh, problems with fuel economy getting those EPA numbers because again, turbos. You get in those turbos and just pour it on fuel. Now I don't have a turbo gauge on this one, but it does in a digital gauge. And I can tell you when driving the Ford EcoBoost engines as well, I've seen it time and time again. As soon as you're into that boost, your fuel economy goes whew, down. I mean, it's just what's gonna happen to these engines. So I think, over the life of this engine, or over a year, or I shouldn't say life, over the year of the engine, or six months, whatever, I think you're gonna see better fuel economy than you will in the V8. However, you're gonna see that number varying greatly as you drive, so there is no solid answer. Um, I think I can get EPA if I was going to, like I did a 100 mile drive, where I drove 50 miles in the wind, 50 miles behind the wind, at 75 miles an hour. That's how I'm gonna get EPA, or 70, 75 in that range, with a little bit of city mixed up. That's how I'm gonna get EPA, because uh, that's more, lab tested kind of realistic in real world terms taking away the wind disadvantage or advantage happening that's how you do that so uh, we also saw that fuel fuel prices vary greatly historically gas prices have done this for years it's just it's what's gonna happen uh, it was funny because when i drove out i ended up paying like a dollar fifty more a gallon and i drove back started paying a dollar fifty less a gallon <laughs> i don't know it just happens you know chicago is gonna be expensive no matter what right so you have the gas station property is more expensive taxes are more expensive you have more people you have more demand you have less supply right now that's just what's gonna happen so i'm not so worried about that to me it's just the cost of doing business doesn't really bug me because, well, I want to do this road trip and I want to do this video, so that's just what it's going to be. So there you go. I mean, again, my final thoughts are uh, if you drive in the wind the whole time and you put the pedal down, you are not going to get good fuel economy. That is what the heck is going on with this truck. If you drive slower and you get the wind behind you and in front of you kind of both ways, you will get the better fuel economy. So that's why I think you're going to see a variety of reports from owners, a variety of discussions you can see online with fuel economy being kind of all over the place in that five, six mile per gallon range, even more seven sometimes, depending on what's going to happen. I can't wait for summer because I, the summer fuel economy is going to be really interesting to see what happens. And then this leveling kit with the running, with the uh, step bars, I mean, I probably lost about half mile per gallon or so by just by doing those two things. You know, anything you add to the truck, uh, it's aerodynamics. Anytime I change that, so this had a rake, so I didn't make the rake, I took away the aerodynamic advantage, it's going to have an impact. That's what's going to happen these days in these uh, ICE gas engine turbocharged trucks. So, for more cool stuff, check the video over here, website down below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.